So today I'm going to present a story of an Apache Solar contribution. As you can see from the title, uh, there are a lot of buzzwords. I mean, that's in line with the name of the conference. So I was like, okay, I should put as many as possible, right? I mean, it's, it's going to make it more appealing. So before we start, uh, a quick introduction about myself. So my name is Alessandro Benedetti. I'm originally from Tarquinia, Italy an ancient uh, city, uh, pre-Roman actually, so from, is an Etruscan city, and I am an R&D software engineer. Uh, in my spare time, I'm the director of my company. I mean, I used to say that because I actually love a lot engineering, and uh, the direction of a company uh, implies a lot of many other things, which sometimes are a little bit more boring, but I really like the R&D side of my job. I have a master's degree in computer science uh, from the University of Rome, and I am a member of the program committee of the European Conference on Information Retrieval, the special interest group in information retrieval, and the SIRES that are uh, academic conferences, but they have also like an industry day normally, so I enjoy taking part of peer reviewing and especially of the reproducibility track. Uh, I've been working for a long time uh, with Lucene and Solar. I am a Lucene and Solar committer, and I am a PMC member of Solar. And been also working with Elasticsearch a lot. So my passion is around integrating artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies with information retrieval. And in my spare time, I also do uh, beach volleyball and snowboarding, uh, not in London where I live, but in Italy when I go back for like the summer or some short winter period. Uh, short introduction about my company, CIS. I founded CIS in 2016, uh, late 2016, and we are information retrieval specialists. So the, the mission of my company is to reduce the gap between academic research in information retrieval and real-world industry application. And we decided to do that through open source software. So that's the reason we are really passionate about open source software. And we are not only using and uh, effectively consulting, training about open source software, but we are actively contributing back. So we are contributing back with ideas, code, and support, and not only uh, through like official code contribution, but also with like uh, internal project that we share in, on our blog and through the mailing list. So we try to help as much as possible because we we really love the scientific approach behind information retrieval, and we want to to give it a hand to the scientific community. We want to improve information retrieval in general. So of course, uh, we need money from our client to, to go ahead, but we are really happy to, to give it back. And some of the trends we, we are working now are listed in the slide. I, I won't repeat them, but we are really passionate about integrating machine learning with search, and this is uh, part of our talk today. So an overview about what I'm going to talk about. So first of all, we're going to describe some of the problem with lexical search, effectively like term-based search. Uh, you know, I'm going to use semantic search as a sort of the holy grail of information retrieval, right? And being able to always recognize the meaning behind the user information need and return relevant results. Uh, currently, uh, most of search solutions you use lexical search, so matching on terms, and there are some problems with it. Then we are going to describe how neural uh, vector-based search works, how it aims to solve those problems, and the Apache Solar implementation that's now available from Solar 9.0 released last month. Then a little bit of a description about BERT and how you can integrate language models, large language models, with SOLAR to obtain an end-to-end -end neural search implementation. I'm going to wrap it up with some future works to describe uh, our current projects, what's currently in line for us to develop, and uh, what we are going to uh, release and contribute soon. So the first problem I want to describe is the uh, vocabulary mismatch problem. 
this affects lexical search in general. So you may see example of the vocabulary mismatch problem with uh, false positives. So the user information need in this example is to find out the population of the city of Rome. We see that one relevant document is returned by the search engine. Rome's population is 4.3 million. So that's, that's fine, it's great, it's a good result. Uh, it has just one query term. So from a lexical perspective, it doesn't sound that great. And, and for this reason, a lexical search engine would return as a better result, actually, a document containing hundreds of people queuing for live music in Rome. So with this document has nothing to do with the Rome's population. I mean, you know, not very relevant, but it shares with the query three query terms. So from a lexical perspective, it contains a lot of information which is in line with the user information need. So that's a false positive caused by the fact that the uh, dictionary used by the user doesn't align with the dictionary in the corpus. Another example is the uh, false negative kind of results that you can get with a vocabulary mismatch problem. So 2022, the year of the tiger, so this example is in line with the um, Chinese calendar. And the query, the user information need is about the size of the tiger, of the big cat called tiger. So how big is a tiger? we can get lexically a document, I mean, assuming we applied a little bit of stemming, a, a, a nice candidate would be the tiger is the biggest member of the Felide family. Now, unfortunately, a, a result that potentially is not returned would be Pantera tigris can reach 390 centimeters nose to tail. We can see here that instead of tiger is used the scientific Latin name for the animal. And even if it's like an interesting and absolutely relevant result, a lexical search engine, assuming it doesn't use any advanced like synonym matching uh, algorithm, is not going to return it. In general, semantic similarity has a problem with the vocabulary. So you may have user information needs that are extremely similar from a lexical perspective, such as how are you or how old are you. So clearly they share a lot of query terms, but the meaning is completely different. On the other end, we can have user information needs that uh, don't share uh, any term at all and with a very similar meaning, such as how old are you and what is your age. So how neural search aims to solve this problem? We need to do a, a, a little step back to describe the vector representation that is used by lexical search and, and by dense retrieval. So sparse modeling implies, and that is used by bag of words examples, bag of words approaches, implies that we model the uh, dimension of the vector that correspond to the size of the term dictionary. So each term in the corpus of information corresponds to one dimension in the vector. So with this structure, we end up having for any given document a vector that is mostly zeros, because uh, most of the terms in the dictionaries are not in a, in a, in a certain document. Then some of the values, so the terms that appear in the document, will be different from zero. So it can be just one when the term is present, or potentially we may encode the term frequencies or any kind of term scoring in this representation. On the other end, with dense representation, we have a fixed number of dimensions. And normally, this is uh, much lower than sparse representations, so the vectors are shorter. And for any given document, we have a vector that is mostly non-zeros. But how can you generate this vector? How can you encode the textual information in vectors? 
with the neural search paradigm, we are going to use uh, deep neural networks to encode the text in a vector representation, store them in data structures at indexing time, and then query them. Specifically, we are going to call transformer the element that will have the responsibility of doing this encoding. We're going to see later on how effectively like large language models and transformer work to a high level and how you can integrate them with Solar. But to the sake of our workflow description, you can imagine that component takes in input text and is able to return an output a vector. Then at indexing time, we take the vectors, one for each document, and we build some sort of data structures, and we're going to see the different options we have. And we build this data structure at indexing time, and then at query time, we run a search on a vector representation of the query to find the closest vectors to the query. And the similarity between the query and the document is, so the similarity score is effectively translated to the distance in a vector space. So when I, mean clo when I say closer, I mean effectively the more similar. There are various ways of calculating the distance between vectors. Uh, we are not going to, to describe that much, the, the math behind that. Uh, just for you to know which kind of distance to use, it depends on your use case. So the, the classic recommendation is like experiment. And just you know, as a general idea, the cosine similarity is a distance measure that takes into account the angle between vectors. And uh, this is pretty much a solid option for information retrieval use cases, uh, but you should experiment. And anyway, there are various options supported by uh, Solar regarding that. So how do you query for vectors? So you want to find the top K nearest vectors, so nearest neighbors, as it calls. And the acronym you potentially have seen is K and N. And what you do is effectively you start from your query vector and you retrieve what's closer. To, I mean, the, the closest, the better, and highest semantic similarity. But running exact nearest neighbor search is expensive. So if you take just your query vector and then the vectors from each of your documents and you just calculate the distance and you may have like millions of vectors, this takes time, this takes computational resources. So, you know, unless you have a small corpus of information, probably it's not the right idea to go with the exact nearest neighbor. So researchers ended up finding like different approximate solutions. So you can lose accuracy, but gain a lot of from the performance perspective. Normally, going uh, through the approximate way means you lose a little bit of information. So you are compressing potentially your, your vectors. You are pre-processing your data and building some data structures that then you reuse at query time. Just to give you like some context, there are mainly three families of solutions for approximating your symbol. Tree-based, where you build effectively a partitioning of your vector space, and then at query time, you just navigate parts of the vector space to find your closest vector or closest vectors. Ashing, so you can reduce the dimensionality of your vectors, hopefully, I mean, avoiding to lose uh, the, the information and keeping the differences between vectors and then grouping similar objects, so like using clustering approaches. Finally, graph-based approaches, which is the one used by Lucene and then in Solar, and especially we're going to talk about HNSW. And first of all, this acronym stands for Hierarchical Navigable Small World Graphs. So it's one of among the uh, top performing solutions in, uh, from the index time data structures that you can use for approximate nearest neighbor. And a couple of references from the original paper that uh, developed the idea. 
Uh, the latest one is from 2018, but of course the research team has been working on these even with some additional developments later than that. So what is in hierarchical navigable small world graph? It's a proximity graph, so it models vectors and distances between vectors. Specifically, each of the vertices in the graph is a vector, and closer vectors are linked together. Now, why uh, is hierarchical? So the, the approach behind hierarchical navigable small world graph takes inspiration from skip lists. So what you do, you model different layers, and the higher the layer, the longer the links, so the longer the edges between the nodes, and this is for fast retrieval. And if you go down, in layers, what you get is shorter edges, so shorter links for accuracy. So you are able to refine the distances and refine the neighbors effectively. So what you do is you go layer by layer with a greedy search, looking for the local minimum that op hopefully is the global minimum. And more you go down and more you refine the, uh, the minimum. The degree of the, of the vertices is something that you decide when building the graph. So effectively, the higher the degree, the lower the probability of hitting a local minimum, because it means that the graph is more connected and you are more likely to end up finding the, the right neighbors. So how this is implemented in uh, solar? First of all, Apache Lucene implementation. So originally, before the end of 2020, vector-based search was doable in Lucene using uh, data structures that were not meant for that functionality. So this means that, yeah, it was working, uh, not in an optimal way, but it was possible to achieve vector-based search. In November 2020, with Apache Lucene 9.0, a dedicated codec with a dedicated file format has been contributed for navigable small world graphs. So that's the first milestone to enable vector-based search and consequentially neural search. Then over the last uh, couple of years, more or less, we got many contributions in that space in Lucene, uh, handling of document deletions, the introduction of the hierarchical H in navigable small world graph, implementation and improvement from the perspective of performance and memory utilization. In March uh, 2022, also uh, pre-filtering has been contributed in Lucene to give the possibility of reducing the scope of your search before looking for neighbors. Uh, many more issues are actually related with this topic. Uh, I tagged them and you can run a Jira query on the Lucene and Solar project from the Apache Software Foundation to find out if you're curious about like all the different contributions. So in Lucene, there's, there's defined a, a set of similarity functions that you can use. The Euclidean distance, the uh, cosine similarity, and in case you have normalized vectors, so vectors of magnitude uh, one, you can use the dot product, which is effectively an optimization of the cosine distance. So you, you don't need, if you normalize before, you don't need to normalize at the end when building the graph and, and, you, and you can use directly the dot product. So they're pretty much similar. Just keep it in mind that depending on the kind of vectors you have, you can use uh, one distance or another. How can you index something that is vectors in Lucene? And this is actually what is used in the Apache Solar implementation, is a dedicated field type called KNN vector field. So a KNN vector field takes in input an array of float values and as simple as it is, you just add it to your document, to your Lucene document, and then uh, you push it to, to your indexing chain. 
and to the codec, the writer, and the graph builder, the HNSW graph is built at indexing time. So, so far, so cool. And what about the query time? So, also from the query time, Lucene exposes a nice interface that is used in Apache Solar to model a KNN query. So, this query takes in input the field, so the KNN vector field you want to run your search in, the query vector, so the target of your search, a simple array of floats, the top K, so the amount of neighbors you want to return, and potentially a pre-filter, so another query as complex as, you, as complex as you like to reduce the scope of your search before you look for neighbors. So the Apache Solar implementation uses these libraries from Lucene and an additional way of encoding the stored content effectively using uh, classic standard float values storing. So to, to make it uh, you know, very transparent and easy to use. So it's been released with Apache Solar 9.0 last May, so it's pretty recent. Uh, I've been working on that at the beginning of the year and thanks to the effort of the community, we are, we are, we've been able to release it uh, last month. So also in the case of Solar, you can take a look to, to the JIRA uh, link from the slides or in general searching for vector-based search in Solar to find like all the related issues and also future works. So how can you use Solar to index and search vectors? and then I'll run a full end-to-end -end neural search. So the entry point is your schema, as usual. So the schema XML allows in Solar for the, to the admin to define your data model. So in your data model, you will define the field type, which is the uh, dense vector field type, and a couple of, of parameters that effectively set the internal Lucene parameters. And these parameters are actually quite simple. So the vector dimension, so the cardinality of your vector, and this is limited to uh, 1024, uh, not for any particular reason except to be performance aware. So it's possible, it, it is a, just an R-coded value because we, we wanted to give flexibility to user, but not too much, and then get back complaints like we are using a 10 million vectors and this doesn't really work. So for this reason at the moment, it's limited to 1024. Uh, we may increase that in the future. Uh, if you want to do that, you need to customize your Lucene build and then set it in Solar. So currently, normally you are fine with values with smaller vectors than uh, 1024, but in case you need something custom, uh, you can do that. And the similarity function. So the three functions that are supported uh, by Solar, as I mentioned before, Euclidean, dot product, and cosine distance. Then you assign this field type to your field, and, and then the usual attributes in the schema to index the, the field, uh, store it, and on and on and on. So currently, uh, with vector-based field effectively, only stored content and indexing is allowed. So doc values and multi-values is not possible at the moment. Is I mean, they are current limitations. And doc values just because we, we don't need them right now. I mean, maybe in the future, if there's any function score related thing that can benefit of them, uh, we'll do that. But at the moment, uh, we were focused on providing a nice and easy uh, KNN experience to our users. There are also a couple of advanced parameters that are strictly related with the current algorithm used, so HNSW, and these parameters affect the way you build the graph at indexing time. So we have the HNSW max connections, which is the parameter that affects the degree of the vertices. So this is uh, related with the balance, the trade-off between like performance and accuracy. And of course, the higher, the more connected the graph, and this means like more uh, computational resources, time for building the graph and for searching. But 
the more accurate results. And also the, the beam width, uh, those parameters actually, both of them are related to specific parameters from the papers. So uh, the name is slightly different in the papers, but in the solar documentation, you will find the mapping between the solar parameters and the paper parameters. And the beam width affects effectively the number of nodes per, per layer. And if you're curious, you can access like the 2018 paper and explore them in details. Uh, norm, I mean, unless you, you want to run like something very specific, um, you, you don't need it to change them if you, unless you really need it. So how can you index vectors in, uh, in solar? So that's quite simple is not that different from a multi-valued float. So you just pass uh, in a JSON, a, a JSON array. So an array of float values. In an XML representation of your document, which is uh, quite verbose, and I don't know if, to be honest, how many still use the XML representation to push data to Solar, uh, but it's doable. So you just have represented uh, with multiple uh, XML nodes. So each one for each element in the vector. And in SolarJ, you can just use Java lists. So you add them to the Solar input document, and you're ready to go. You, you can push the document or batch of documents to Solar. So from the indexing perspective and retrieval perspective in the search results, again, not very different from just a multi-valued float. So that's, that's quite simple and, and nice. From the searching perspective, a new query parser has been introduced to Solar that takes in input very simple parameters. The field, which must be a dense vector field to, to run your queries. The top K, so the amount of neighbors you want to retrieve. And the query vector, that's it, represented with uh, an array with square brackets. So. You define already everything at indexing time, so you don't need any, anything else. So it's quite simple. But uh, there are some uh, limitations at the moment. So let's, let's explore the limitations as well. So filter queries with vector-based search in Solar. So at the moment, you can use vector-based search, K and N, in filter queries. So where the FQ parameter uses the KNN query parser and the main query uses a classic lexical search. You can also do the opposite. So you can use the KNN vector-based search in your main query and like classic lexical search in the filter query or filter queries. But what's going on at the moment is post filtering. So what you do is you intersect the document IDs coming from your filters with the document IDs coming from your top K neighbors. And this means that potentially you end up with less results than your top K, because you just take the, the top K and, and potentially you reduce that set. So uh, this, of course, is a problem. It's a current limitation, uh, but with, a, with the new release, uh, coming up, so with Solar 9.1, we are introducing pre-filtering as well. So you do the filter first, and then you look for the top K neighbors. Another limitation is with re-ranking. So it's currently possible to use re-ranking with the KNN query parser, but what happens is that you change the score of the first pass retrieval only of the documents that appears in the top K. So you're not running a one-to-one -one rescoring of each of the uh, first pass retrieval search results, but you just effectively intersect them again with the KNN results. So pure rescoring is a, another feature that is coming with a future solar release. So you will be able to select the top K candidates uh, in a lexical way, potentially, and then just rescore them or manipulate, combine their score with a language model-based approach. 
And, and something that is actually uh, currently possible and can be quite interesting is to combine hybrid dense and sparse retrieval in Apache Solar. So there are query parsers in Apache Solar that allow you to combine different query parsers, so like different clauses, such as the Boolean query parser, where you can define like multiple should clauses that are going to affect how the search results are matched from your index and scored in your ranking. So you can define a clause, which is a lexical clause, and another clause that is a pure vector-based search clause. And then documents are going to, to be returned, matching, in this example, both the should clauses and scores are calculated uh, summing them, or potentially depending on the way you are combining these clauses, if you are using an edis max, for example, uh, picking the, the max out of it. And what happens from the Lucene side is that you build your query combining uh, the results of those two different query parsers in this example. So we've done some uh, initial benchmark and what we found out was on a small index uh, performance to be quite nice. Of course, this doesn't necessarily reflect linearly uh, bigger volumes, but uh, with an index of more or less like one gigabyte, two gigabytes, uh, we, we ended up having uh, this kind of measures in terms of time when building the index, so it takes more time to build the, the graphs. But from a query time perspective, KNN ended up being quite fast, actually uh, faster than classic simple lexical search. And in terms of optimization of your segments in the index, so after a merge of all your segments, we notice an even bigger improvement in uh, KNN search results. So we're going to do uh, additional benchmarks in the future, but this just to give an idea that it's usable effectively already. So how, how can you use uh, BERT with all of this? So first of all, how effectively you can uh, encode vectors from text and then use those vectors in Solar. So there are various ways. Of course, you may have already vectors. Maybe you want to generate vectors from text. And large language models can be an option. Um, but large, large language models needs like a lot of data to be trained on. So it's normally difficult for like a small enterprise to gather uh, such a big amount of data. And for this reason, transformers were uh, quite successful. So because they used a pre-training on uh, large uh, corpora, such as uh, Wikipedia, the web, a large bibliographic uh, corpus of information. And then that means for the transformer, for the language model, and a way to achieve an understanding, a general understanding of the language. Then you will need to fine tune it with your uh, smaller amount of data, which is domain related, potentially to achieve a specific task. So you may, uh, you may be looking for text summarization, maybe uh, dense retrieval, uh, maybe uh, translation, so machine translation, or essay generation, or whatever is what, what you want to do. And the large language models approach share similarities with, uh, with word to vec So effectively, word to vec uh, was generating a vector per word with like uh, large language models, you can generate vectors per sentences, for example, for each sentence. And just to give you an idea of how some of them work, is using like a mass language modeling approach, where you take an input, a window of a text with various terms, you hide one of the terms, and the model aims to predict the missing term. So you train it on on this large corpora, and then the, the language model is able to predict uh, missing terms, and you can extract the weights from the deep learning neural networks you produced to effectively get the vectors. So BERT is one of them, and is actually a, a huge family of them, and was originally uh, contributed by Google, and over the time has been like refined a lot, 
and there are like many different variations. There are, uh, I mean, you can download like pre-trained BERT models and then you can fine tune them. And uh, the, the important thing for you to know is that they allow you to pass from text to vectors. And how can you do that with like uh, open source software? So with open source software, uh, the, the result is going to be using uh, like a parser for your text, a classic text analysis, and then you, you take an input a model. So this model that can be originally pre-trained and then uh, if you just use it pre-trained, it's not going to work that well. So the, the recommendation is to go through the fine-tuning step. So the fine-tuning step effectively takes an input the train the pre-trained model and refine the weights in the neural networks, potentially uh, changing the last layer to adapt to your domain, to your task. So in uh, in dense retrieval case, what we want to do is to achieve a large difference between the score of a positive document for your query and a negative document for your query. So effectively providing these examples, we can fine tune the model to recognize better this, this difference and effectively then we can pick the, the weights from the neural network and those are the, the vectors values. In, in this example, we, we are going to uh, use uh, PyTorch to, to build uh, and encode the vectors. And we are going to use, uh, in, in this case, the model is, is something in input, right? So uh, it doesn't matter what the model is. Uh, we, we pick in this example, like a sentence BERT uh, just downloaded from, uh, from the available pre-trained models. But as I mentioned, it's not recommending to use it just as it is because you want to fine tune it. But with PyTorch and some Python code is actually a super simple to move from your document text to vectors. So you, you import your libraries, you may potentially use a GPU uh, acceleration or not, it depends if you have it available. And then what you do, you read your documents, you fetch sentences, one in, in this example is one for each document, and then you push a, a batch to the sentence pair to encode each sentence to a vector, and then you push the vectors to solar. So literally, like with 12, 13 lines of codes, you can achieve vectorization. Of course, then if you want to bring this to production, you need to to also uh, take care of performance and, and everything. But nowadays, thanks to like GPU utilization, you can achieve like nice performances. Of course, it's expensive to build to build vectors, but then you may actually, I mean, this is the, the balance. So you spend a lot of time uh, generating the vectors and at indexing time to then obtain the benefits at query time. So to wrap it up, some uh, future and current works we are doing. So from the solar perspective, working to simplify the configuration in the schema so that currently you need potentially to specify the codec you want to use, which is quite advanced. So we want to simplify that. We want to just leave the algorithm as a, an input parameter and the advanced HNSW uh, tuning for the graph building as a possibility. But we, we don't want users to like really specify the Lucene 90 or 91 or 92 codec. So this is currently a work in progress. Pre-filtering to solar. So as I mentioned, in March has been contributed to Lucene. And this has been adopted in Elasticsearch. So uh, we want to do the same for solar. Actually, I mean, it's almost finished this work and it's going to be contributed and available from solar 9.1. So this will give the ability of running filter queries, reduce the scope of your search, and then looking for top K neighbors. 
and then some Lucene simplification. So I've been working on uh, the vector similarity function simplification because the Euclidean distance works like the opposite of like the others. So effectively, the distance whilst the others are a similarity. So you know, the more distant actually, uh, the less relevant. So the others on the other end is like the higher cosine similarity, the more relevant. So this like different in uh, in trend uh, was completing a little bit the code. So I've been working into that simplification. And another contribution we are working on is to provide an update request processor to enrich text at indexing time and get the vectors directly in Solar and the same query parser that takes in input text and a BERT model to do the inference. Of course, uh, from a code perspective, it's not that complex, but we are also evaluating all the uh, performance implications. So uh, before like contributing and making it available in Solar, we want to make sure that there's like a nice balance in the memory, for example, used and uh, by your Solar instance to do these effectively like end-to-end -end directly in Solar. So some additional resources from our blog. So we wrote a lot about neural search in Solar and all uh, the details of our contribution and how you can use BERT to improve search relevance. And if you can also tackle this problem with like additional strategies, AI related, such as uh, document enriching and potentially like changing the the terms score. So instead of using term frequencies in the index, using term scores uh, effectively identified through deep learning. So uh, to, to finish the talk with some uh, thanks to uh, the Apache Lucene community, uh, which I'm part for all the HNSW uh, goodies and improvements, uh, Elia Vorciani, a colleague of mine that helped me for the contribution, Christine for the accurate review, so Christine is a, a Lucene and Solar committer. She helped me a lot in reviewing the code of the contribution. Cassandra for the documentation. So uh, being a non-native speaker, uh, I you know, I ended up having some not ideal documentation sentences, so she helped me a lot to simplify and improve that. And finally, Michael for the discussion about dense vectors and how to, to describe that and the difference between sparse and dense vector representation in a ni nice and easy way in the documentation for everyone to understand. And thank you, audience, for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions right now in the room? Oh, someone there? Uh, great talk, thank you. Um, the the uh, vector dimension, um, do you have any kind of suggestions on how that should be tuned and where people should start? So mm, I, I think probably I would recommend to start with a classic uh, like a small BERT implementation with 768, which is one of the default you get from the pre-trained and start from there. Uh, keeping in mind the fact that currently in Solar, 1024 is going to be the limit. Of course, it also depends, uh, you know, if you have already vectors, so in that case, you may need to adapt, but in case you move from text to vectors, I would start that way and then check uh, effectively through experiments, if that makes sense for your domain. Uh, but yeah, I would start simple with like a pre-trained uh, 768 BERT, fine tune it and, and check how it goes. Uh, great presentation, Alessandro, and happy to see ANN search in solar. Uh, great work. work. Um, so one way to do hybrid search is to, um, for example, say, okay, I trust lexical search 90% and I trust uh, ANN search 10%, so you could assign weights during the scoring, right? And then your re-ranker could reorder the documents in the way they should be reordered. Um, and the reason here, I guess, is that dense search is more like optimized for recall, or at least vector search, right? And the lexical search could be tuned for precision, so you could have a balance there. So have you thought about this use case, and are you planning to implement one? So effectively, if you use combined query parsers and you are aware that the score coming from vector-based search is going to be uh, from zero to one, for example, and 
you may tune it already, because anyway, the lexical search part effectively calculates the BM25 score with all the uh, boosts you can add as, as you prefer. And then uh, if you combine like Boolean, you're just going to do the sum. So uh, what you mentioned it should be already possible. Of course, there's a problem with the lexical side that is not probabilistic in Solar and, and Lucene. So you don't really know if it's going to be you know, like, I don't know, 10,000 or, or one, while the vector-based search, unfortunately, is going, I mean, unfortunately, it's always going to be from zero to one. So possible, but definitely, probably, yeah, it's not easy to, to do that right now. Um, also, probably the ideal kind of scenario I would like is to integrate it in some way with like uh, learning to rank so that these weights can come a little bit like uh, with more sense and making sure that you don't go like uh, dwarfing the vector-based search score or the other way around. So possible right now, but I would dedicate a little bit more time um, for, for this problem. Does this answer your question, Dimitri? Last one, please. Thank you for a great talk, Alessandro. And uh, I would be interested to know if we have benchmarked or have some stats to um, differentiate between the classical similarity and vector. Like, does it um, outperforms the BM25 in any way? Do we have any stats about it? I mean, I love that you showcased about the indexing part, but do we have anything on the precision part, uh, vector search and BM25? Okay, so I've not done that directly from a quality perspective, uh, but uh, so the, the solar implementation is quite similar to the Elasticsearch implementation, which is quite different from the open search implementation, actually. So if you take a look to the current benchmarks for Elasticsearch, I'm pretty sure they are pretty much similar to the solar ones. Uh, we're going to do in the future also like quality related benchmarks for the solar implementation, but Elasticsearch and Solar, both of them uses the same Lucene code. So from a quality perspective, uh, there are already, so if you go, I don't remember now uh, out of my had the exact links, but there are some benchmarks for quality, like recall uh, based mostly for Elasticsearch, combining it with like uh, Facebook files and Vespa thing and others. So you can take a look, you, you, at least you can have some inspiration and some idea from there. And when we release the solar ones, I suspect it's going to be pretty similar. Okay, thank you very much, Alessandro. That was great. Thank you. Thank you.